This is the Sinclair Pocket TV and the actual model number is on the back. Uh, it's an FTV1. And it came out in 1983 and although around that time Casio brought out some LCD display TVs, uh, this one's actually a CRT TV so it's got a cathode ray tube inside it uh, which makes it quite special technology I think because the, the way they actually managed to do that was to aim the electrons down the tube at an angle uh, and hit the screen at an angle as opposed to most cathode ray tubes just come out the back and it makes a very deep television set but uh, that, that's not the case for this pocket TV so it's really good uh, good technology but apparently the reason why it didn't succeed was because Casio had bought out the LCD TVs around the same kind of time or at least a couple of years later uh, so it's got an off on off uh, button and volume and then you can tune the TV with this rotary knob on the on the other side and the tuning goes from 21 channel 21 to channel 69 it's got a aerial on, to, on top a telescopic aerial a bit like a radio an FM radio uh, around the back so this is the stand so that flips out like that and you can use it to stand up the TV on its end on this side a battery goes in there uh, but it's not like double A's or anything like that like standard batteries so it's one of these flat batteries and not only is this a flat battery but it's a flat battery uh, and these are six volts and you can't get them anymore uh, so you can't really get any batteries to power this TV anymore but I can power it off of the uh, power jack which goes in there and the thing about devices of this age is that they tend to be negative pin uh, neg uh, and ground um, and a positive on the outside of the uh, barrel, uh, and there, there's a headphone jack as well. Then you can see the speaker through the side. But yeah, this this battery would normally go slot in there. Like that. But I think it's probably it's puffed up as well, <laughs> so it won't won't actually slide in there anymore. But I'll power this on. So I've got my power adapter here. Um, and it can take 6 volts, but it can also go down as far as 5 volts. So I'm only running off of 5 volts just to be safe and, and stuff. And uh, like I say, the tip is negative and the barrel is positive, uh, which is... Because most power adapters these days have a positive tip, so don't just plug a, a power adapter straight into it. You need to make sure that it's a negative tip. So if I switch it on, it comes on. I'll just switch off my switch off the flash on my camera so you can see the display. As you can see, it's got a funny shape down the bottom here. Now I'm guessing that this is probably to do with um, capacitors need changing because that looks like a funny discharge kind of shape. So it's like the capacitors probably need it uh, in a bit of a funny state. Uh, by not getting much on the reception at the minute. But what I'll do is I'll um, take off the back because I'll replace the capacitors and, uh, and after I've done that, see if I can get the station on it. Because it's a cathode ray tube, it needs to have the power source removed and any batteries removed for at least 15 minutes before taking the back off because there's probably voltages of over a thousand voltage, over a thousand volts in there and uh, need, they need to dissipate before actually removing them back and exposing the leads. There's four screws that come out of there, and then there's a screw which is underneath the warranty seal. Uh, and I wouldn't have put, I've, that was sealed up and I put that hole in there, and I wouldn't have done that if it didn't need looking at. Hopefully just replacing the capacitor should actually solve the issue. So this is cathode ray tube and it comes across there and then blasts out onto the TV screen at an angle incredible technology and then this circuit board just lifts up out of there and the capacitors are just around the edge and I think there's a capacitor underneath there's a capacitor under under there as well so I need to somehow get under to remove that capacitor all the others are, are just around the edge hopefully so I'll replace those and see if it makes any difference.
So I've replaced the capacitors in the back and adjusted the capacitors, variable capacitors and variable resistors to get a decent picture. Uh, if I just put the area up a bit, I'll switch on. So you get the static. And then if I tune in to a station, hopefully. And there we were receiving the station from the 80s.